Thank you for coming. I know it's difficult after lunch. I'll try to be as fun as possible for you not to get sleep. Yeah, but if you take a nap, it's not, it's fine for me. I understand. Uh, okay, I'm going to talk about uh, quiz refactorings, but also some uh, uh, quick quiz update. You know, the problem with calling your your talk uh, an update is that they put you after lunch. So, tip, never call it update, okay? So, just a quick quiz update. Uh, there are new things all the time in quiz, uh, but the most important ones lately is that uh, we have a way to bootstrap an image from zero, that Juan is going to talk about that on Friday, and also the possibility to uh, load compiled libraries without sources and those kind of things is important for distribution of uh, uh, systems and Felipe is going to talk about that on Friday too and we're going to start a new way of releasing quiz uh, the idea is to copy some of the ideas from Red Hat and I think uh, I don't know Juan if you're going to talk more about how the releases are going to be but don't worry uh, we will uh, announce that on the list and we will talk about that later but you know it's, new things are coming that's all I have to say about quiz goodbye <laughs> so now about quiz refactory thank you thank you very much <laughs> so a little bit of history uh, without words of advice <laughs> you know that <laughs> so uh, when we started to use quiz, quiz didn't have refactories, and for us that we teach at the university, refactories were really important. So we decided with Maximo to implement, okay, let's try to do a rename, how long it can take. And it took us like 10 minutes. Uh, and so we decided to start uh, implementing refactories. We didn't want to use the uh, refactoring browser because it uses its own parser. It's uh, quiz has already two parsers. We don't have to add a new parser. And we say, what the heck? Let's start from zero, and see what it, you know, what it goes. And I think it it, it went really well. Uh, we have a, a lot of refactorings, more than in other uh, small talks, and all of them are tested with. They were developed with TDD with very good coverage. And so, yeah, that's that little bit of the history. Uh, but now, uh, let's go to the important stuff, okay, the examples. Um, <clears throat> so I will start with um, the struct method. In quiz now, if you struct some code that is repeated, that here, like here, um, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna go refactoring struct method. It will ask you for the name of the uh, new message and <clears throat> I don't know why this okay um, I'm going to remove that one so it recognizes uh, repeated code okay so it allows you to say okay I want to uh, refactor and if you select refactor it will remove all these and will replace with a new message send you can say, I want to replace only the uh, selection I had in the browser. I want to replace only the repeated code in this method. Or I want to replace all the methods in the class. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a refactor and it's going to change those two places. Uh, the same thing works on different methods. So it's not only that looks for repeated code uh, 11 factorial is not only in you know in a method that looks for uh, the repeated code but also in other methods on the same class but okay, I'm not going to do it and also on uh, different methods on different uh, subclasses so it looks for the code in the class and its subclasses okay for the repeated code so in this case is going to find this one, 12 factorial, and this is a subclass of refactoring examples, also finds 12 factorial. The problem with looking for repeated code is that it, uh, it uses a string comparison. So right now, if I have 11 factorial spaces spaces and 11 space factorial, 
and we try to do an extract method for that, it won't recognize the other uh, places with the same code. So yesterday we've been working on the camp small talk. We did a lot of things and we managed to uh, be able to find repeated code based on the AST, not only the, um, not only the strings. So for example, here I have 10 factor, 10 space factorial, 10 space space factorial, 10 factorial. This is, I didn't know you could do this. <laughs> and now if uh, we want to do the struct, it will show you all the places uh, even though it's not exactly the same string, okay? So that's what we did yesterday. It has an, a disadvantage before you ask, because I know some people that wanted to ask this. It's not working if you select more than one collaboration, okay? It's, but it will. It will. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, the things about struct method. That's a new... Uh, a new functionality. We have uh, the inline method also. <clears throat> um, here. So, um, to inline, let me remember. Yeah. So, yeah. This, uh, this what, what I want to show about this uh, refactoring is how we use um, live typing uh, to look for the senders and implementers of the message. So let me remember a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So the idea is we have two different places where the message to inline is being sent. It's being sent in this case to self. So the type of the receiver is refactoring examples, but it's also being sent here to inline, to an, a variable, to an object whose type is also refactoring examples, okay? So what I want to show that if you try to inline this method and you say, I want to select all the senders to inline, not only this one, and let's say I don't want to remove the current implementation, and if I select actual scope, it will show me, uh, well, this is the uh, implementer, and it will show me the senders, this one, the one I selected, and the other one that re, you know knows exactly that he, he, this method can be in this message sent can be in line because A is of type refactoring example. Okay, so if I refactor, then we will have a uh, ten factorial here, and if we go to here, uh, we will have a thousand factorial. Sorry. 100 factorial. <laughs> so that's one thing about the inline. The other interesting thing to show about the inline is that sometimes you want to inline a method that defines uh, a variable that is already defined in the method you want to inline it. So we have a variable here that is A, but we, if we look for the implementation of this message, we can see that there is also a variable called A. So the inline recognize that and renames. Let's put an inline. It renames that variable to a different one, in this case, A1. And, uh, well, I don't know. Uh, it's doing what the inline is supposed to do, okay? Before we had this self method with A var, and this was uh, 10 times 20, so it inline 10 times 20, it put that in A1, and then A to A1, okay? Uh, what else? Inline. If you have questions, let me know. Inline method. Yeah. Inline variable. That's another... Arnan? Yes. In order to uh, apply their factors using live typing, uh, you need to run first. You have to have type information, yeah. Uh, uh, and in order to have that, you have to run uh, the tests first so you can uh, populate that information. That's right, yeah. And Remember that live typing collects types all the time. So 
if you don't have type information, it will tell you, you know, I, I don't have type information, or it will show you, I don't know what to do here. Okay. And if, uh, so if I open the image, I have to run the test to populate that, or is it saved with the image? Well, no, it's saved with the image. That information saves with the image. So you don't need to run the things all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it's, the informations are objects. That, you know, type informations are arrays that are common objects that are saved like any other one with the image. Thank you. Yeah. So just um, <clears throat> to show you what would happen, let's do a revert here of the method and still have the implementation here of that method. Uh, mm, what did I do? Uh, inline method? No, it's this one. No, was it? Uh, I don't remember the example. Yeah, so here we have a message to inline, I think. Method to inline, this one. So, um, yeah. So here we had a... Yeah, let's go back. Mm. So, that's something that we don't have is an undo. Would be good for this example. Okay. Um, here. Send to inline. Okay. So, uh, I have this message to inline, okay, that is implemented here in this class and returns a 100 factorial. But the senders of this one are this and this. And here, we don't have type information because I just recompile the method. Every time you recompile the method, the cache of types are uh, erased, are reset. So now, <clears throat> if I do an inline here, And if I select actual scope, it will all only show me as sure message send this one, as some possible message send the other one, because it doesn't have the information to let you know that, yeah, I'm sure that the receiver of this message is of the type that you are expecting, okay? That's why it, and you can do the refactor and if I, yeah, and it will refactor both because they are here, but, you know, the selection of, of the possibles depends on you, okay? But what happens if now we run this method? If we run the method, we have type information, and now if we try to do the inline, <clears throat> With the actual scope it will show that this one is sure you know to uh, do the refactor okay so that's the difference one of the differences cool um inland variable uh, okay um in variable so we have here one variable A with many different assignments. So the inline variable is the opposite of the struct variable. So if you try to inline the variable from here, inline temporary, it will not allow us to do it because there are multiple assignments and it doesn't know which one you want to inline and which, which values and so on. But if you are here and you inline from here, So it will inline up to the next assignment, okay? Because if not, it is not a refactoring. So you could inline there, and you can inline here. Yeah? And it works as expected. Um, 
Okay. Push up. Push up method. The push up pushes up or pulls up a method to a superclass. And we have many cases. For example, if we have a method with the same implementation in the siblings of the class that you're pushing up, it will ask you if you want to remove also that method of the sibling. So uh, here we have method with same implementation to push up. Uh, I don't know if you see the hierarchy. Okay, we have, oh, it's, it's a pity. Okay, we have refactoring example with do these two subclasses. So this method is implemented in both subclasses with the same code. Okay, so because it is the same code, if I try to do a push up, it will ask me, you know, method blah, blah, has equivalent method declared in, well, refactoring example subclass 2. How do you want to proceed? Only push up this method or push up and delete the equivalent methods. So I will select this one and something won't work. <laughs> What's up? Cool. Um, as on the right collection. Um, no, let's try it. Method of building the vendor methods, the kind of methods in the bar of the Swiss. But in the middle of the it's a good bar. A side, seat down, every. Um, I did. Let's try it again. Anna. Okay, now it worked. I don't know what happened. So now the method is here. Uh, method with same implementation and is not implemented in the subclasses. It removed the method from the other subclass. Then we have the option, uh, of course, is if uh, the method push up with recursive sense. Okay. Uh, if that method, the implementation in other siblings is not the same, it won't push up that, that method, okay? And what happens if you have a method like this one that sends a message to self. For this to work, you should also push up this method. Okay? So we changed the implementation to do that. And now, if you want to push up this method that has references that sends a message to self, and this one just send another message to self, and this one returns one, so you will push up all the... Uh, how do you say, the, the the collaborations, okay, the tree or whatever. So let's do push-up. Uh, has the following dependence. So it tells you, you know, it has also these dependent messages. What do you want to do? Only push-up or push-up and all dependent methods. We, I will do that. And if we look now here, we will see that this method sent from push-up which send to self is implemented in refactoring example and also another send to self is here. So it pushed up the three methods. Um, and of course, what happens if there is a recursive send to self? You know, that could <laughs> break the algorithm, but we took care of that. Uh, so here it send send a message send blah 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 and this one send a message that is the one I want to push up. Okay? You see? It's a cycle there. Okay. So if I push it, push up. Everything will work as expected. So we will have here 
uh, the push-up with, with recursive send to self, and also this one implemented here, okay? So that's uh, the push-up, the changes we made to the push-up. Okay, push down uh, with the same implementation in one subclass. Okay, so one of the things we uh, improve of the push down, uh, let me see, same method to push down, yeah. So let's say we have this method implemented in one of the subclasses. So what should we do if we want to push down the method? Uh, so before, uh, the, you couldn't do the refactoring because the message was already implemented in the subclass. But now it looks for the implementation in the subclasses and if the implementation is the same, it will allow you to do the push down, okay? So if I do a push down of this method, it will work, okay? And we will have it here and here. So it doesn't stop you from doing the, the push down. Uh, if uh, the method is implemented uh, differently, okay, so we have this method that returns one and this one that returns 10 in a subclass. So what should happen if you want to do a push down? So before, as I said, you couldn't do the push down, but now it recognizes that it is a different method, a different implementation, and will ask you, what do you want to do? Do you want to push down the current method or do you want to keep the method in the subclass? And you can choose the option you want. So method already existing. Uh, do you want to continue? Oh, no, okay, sorry, it will be overwritten. And let's say I want to say yes, and yeah. Um, it puts, you know, the return one, it, it, over, it overrides, yeah, it overrides the subclasses. And it lets the subclass responsibility in the superclass. Yes. Um, when we are pushing down a method, the example you were showing, and uh, a method, a message that is uh, sent calls a method that is implemented in both places, okay, in the superclass and the subclass. Yeah. Uh, to keep existing behavior, what you need to do is to remove the implementation in the superclass and keep the one in the subclass. Yes. And I, even that, what you want to do at refactor is why not just do that instead of asking? Um, I don't remember. Um, yeah. I, I don't uh, remember. Per perhaps if some subclasses don't include the uh, the uh, the cold method and you are pushing to all subclasses, you need to move yeah, to some and keep the other yeah, behavior. I don't remember why we decided to, because you want to push down, maybe maybe it's because your idea is to use the new implementation. But yeah, I think, I mean, to be a refactoring, we should keep the current implementation. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember why we decided to do that. I will review it. Yes. Something along the lines of yeah. one. Uh, technically, technically, what you just showed would be a refactor, uh, right? Okay, because okay. So, yeah, I. so it tells you that it's a different implementation and it won't push down it and if you do it you do it by your own and that's not a refactoring yeah yeah okay that's technically not a refactoring but if you wanted to convert that push down into a refactor per se yeah we could implement yeah. it in the classes, in the that, classes do, that does don't, not that's right yeah, I don't know why we didn't do that. That's something I have to check. That, that's a pretty common behavior we, we found when using quiz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we also added the possibility to push down to one subclass. So you have uh, this method, and you want to sub, uh, push down that to one subclass. Uh, let's say to this one. But because it is not a refactoring, it tells you, you know, this is not a refactoring, 
existing code may not work, do you want to continue? Uh, and we allow to do this because it's very common sometimes that you want to push down one method, uh, you're changing things, and for some moment in time, you don't want this to be a refactoring, so you can do it, okay? But that's not a refactoring. And also, uh, this is an interesting example. Um, let's say we want to push down this method that is implemented in one of the subclasses, but not in the other. So you can push down to one subclass, the one that is not implemented in, so subclass one, I'm going to push down to that one, and it will work. It won't ask you if you want to do it because the, the message is also implemented in the sibling, so it is a refactoring and it lets the subclass responsibility here. Yes, five minutes. Yes. Um, okay, so we made all these changes on the push up and push down uh, because people asked for them, and I think they are very useful. Uh, we are also implementing new refactoring. The move instance variable is not yet on the quiz base. We are, you know, uh, testing it. Uh, so let's say we have this class with a message, uh, variable var, var to move, and that variable has a getter and a setter, okay? <clears throat> and I want to move this variable to another class. So to be able to move a variable or to move a method, you have to have an object where to move it and also the type of that object, or the class of that object, to move that variable. So if we move the variable, uh, I'm going to move var to move, I'm going to move it target to move, and the name of the class is going to be target to move, okay? So now the variable is not here, Uh, the references to that variable are now through the target to move object and because we are accessing from outside that variable is that we have the getter and the setter for that variable. Okay? If the variable did not have accesses or it was only write but not read, we only create the the setter, not the getter, and so on. Okay? Um, uh, this example, move variable, move to variable with access, I don't remember this one. Oh, this one doesn't have getters and setters, just, uh, um, yeah. So let's move this one. Is var, no, var to move, it should be without accessors here and um, so yeah, it will create the getters and setters. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why I did that example. <laughs> okay, so anyway, you can move a variable, okay, to a different class and you can do the same with a method. You can move a method to another class and remember that always when you move a variable or a method you need an object and therefore the uh, class of that object to move the method or the variable to. So a um, simple method move. Okay, so this is a method that just returned 10 factorial so I can move it and I will move it to this object that is of type target to move. Okay, so now it says target to move, simple method to move, and the implementation of this one is on target to move. Okay? If you don't want this method anymore, you can do an inline. It also works when you reference itself. So, for example, um, 
move method with send to self. This one. So if you, I want to move it to this object of type target to move, and now because it's referencing self, it will ask me the uh, name of the uh, parameter for that message. And if we look at the implementation, we can see that it receives an instance of that class. Uh, okay, and you also can move in, uh, you know, method that reference to variables. I'm not going to show it because we are, we, I run out of time. Uh, just to let you know, I, I didn't do all those things. Uh, Maximiliano did the move instance variable move method is working on the struct class. Is one of the guys doing the thesis on this, and Marcelo is working on the push down, push up, extract parameter object, a new refactoring we're going to add, and the parameterization of repeated call for the struct method. Uh, we're going to look for repeated call with small differences and uh, be able to parameterize that. And that's all. Thank you. All right. We don't have time for questions. Well, one question, okay. And in the last refactor, when you, in order to move the, the method, uh, the ID asked you uh, about the class of target to move. Yeah. It, in theoretically, it could get that from the live typing, right? That's right. Not yet. Not yet. It will. It is. It is in the, in the way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well. Yeah. One more and that's all. And yeah, the next one. La última. La última. Hernan, great job. A very simple question. When you do the inline, uh, imagine you are inlining the method M, the M uh, references to supper M or or another. Do, do you if you if you want to inline a method that uh, references to super, you cannot. Okay. Yeah, that's the limit. Uh, yeah, you cannot do it. Uh, that's a, a, a test we have, yeah. Or maybe uh, in general, in any other method, maybe we would like to. Well, for super, I remember that we don't allow you to inline. Uh, sure. uh, there are many restrictions to inline a method. Okay. Right. So if it is in the same class, I think we allow you to do it. But if it is in a different hierarchy, we don't allow you to do yeah. it. But uh, so there are many things to yeah. check. Yeah. No, no. Thank you. Yeah, you're Thank you very much.